Hey family, welcome back to Beloved Always. I hope you're doing wonderfully well. So in today's video, we are talking about persecution, how to defend your faith, and also how to be a bold witness in this time, even when you suffer for righteousness sake. So over the last week or so, I was reflecting on the fact that, okay, right now we are all kind of hidden away because of the situation that's going on in the world. We're in lockdown, we're mostly at home, and if we're at work, we are social distancing. And so I was just asking the Lord earlier this week, okay, God, I know that I'm hidden away in this time. I know that I have time to spend with you, but I need you to prepare me for when I do have to go back out into the world, when I do have to engage with people like I was before, when I do have to live for you publicly as I am living for you now privately. And I felt quite intimidated because honestly, I know what it's like to deal with hostility, rejection. And so I decided, okay, I really need to study this thing again because I don't want to be left wanting when I go back out into the world. I don't want to be underprepared. I want to have the word of God hidden in my heart so that I can be strengthened. I want to encourage you to really be ready to give an answer for the faith that you hold, to be able to respond to those who naysay, to those who doubt your God, to those who discriminate against your faith and put you down and make you feel as though because you believe in the Lord Jesus you are somehow an alien or you are unintelligent and unlearned. So I'm going to read from 1 Peter 3 and this is what the scripture says. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake you will be blessed. Have no fear of them nor be troubled but in your hearts honour Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Now this is encouraging, but it also is a call to action. You can't be passive about this. You have to be prepared. You have to know your God. You have to know his word and be ready to give an answer to those who challenge you. This means spending time intimately with him in prayer and reading the word and ultimately receiving a conviction of the faith you hold. Many of us kind of grew up in Christian households or had faith imposed on us, but never truly came to an understanding of what it means to follow Christ. Now is the time to really deepen your faith and plant your roots deep so that when persecution comes or when people ask you questions, you're able to give a response. Now the key here is to how we approach these encounters or to how we approach situations where we know we're being maltreated or being persecuted. We must maintain a gentle and meek and respectful spirit because that speaks volumes to the spirit of God that is living within us. If we become like those in the world who are very rude, disrespectful and challenging to us in our faith, then we are no better than them and we are not walking in the love of Christ. And so we have to be able to temper our passion, temper our anger sometimes with love so that we are able to be effective witnesses. And finally, if we do suffer for being zealous for the Lord, for doing good works, for loving, for walking in truth and grace, then it is a good thing. As much as we think, Lord, why are you causing me to go through this? Or why did you put me in this circumstance where I have to deal with difficult co-workers or difficult people? It's something that strengthens our faith, but also importantly, allows us to partake in the sufferings of Christ. Christ came to this world and he did no one any wrong, but he was hated, he was persecuted, he was lied upon, he was cheated. The world hated him and he tells us that because we are his disciples and the world has not known him, then they will not know us. And so rejoice. As much as it's difficult and as much as we don't feel like it, rejoice because we are being counted worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. And this is just one of those passages of scriptures that I have meditated on as the Lord has been really urging me to prepare for the coming persecutions, for the coming trials, for the coming difficulties that we are going to face when we go back into this world. And I really want to encourage you to do the same. So how have you been handling persecution? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you again in my next video. Bye.